Hey guys, it's Pat here, and I'm really excited because you are very close to finally getting your podcast ready for launch, which is really exciting. But there's a few missing pieces which we're gonna go over in this video. At this point, you likely have recorded an episode or maybe a few. You've exported them, you've tagged them properly, and now it's an MP3 file that's ready for the world. So where do you go from here? So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your podcast host. This is your media host where you actually upload your files to. That's gonna give you what's called your podcast feed link. That is what then you will give to iTunes and Stitcher and Google Play. And then after a certain period of time, you're gonna be approved and then you're gonna be ready to get and share your podcast. Now you can also place your podcast on your website and have show notes. We'll talk about all those things in this video, but for right now, I'm gonna show you the podcasting host that I recommend and uh, we'll get set up and I'll show you how it works. All right, in terms of podcast hosting companies, meaning this is where you upload your audio files so that when a person calls for that file, this is where it's being downloaded from. It makes it very easy for you to manage all this versus having these audio files uploaded onto your own uh, servers. You do not want that. That'll eat your bandwidth. That'll cost you lots of money. This is why these services exist. So the top two that I would recommend are Libsyn and also Buzzsprout. They're both great. I've used them both. Uh, there are some slight advantages to each, but for this demonstration, I'm gonna use Libsyn. It's the one I use for the Smart Passive Income podcast. And we're just gonna show you how to get set up with Libsyn from here. Right, I'm not gonna get into detail about account creation, but I do wanna share some of these plans really quick. Um, there's a number of plans that you can get. I don't want you to be super confused. Really, uh, what most people get is the $15 a month plan, which allows for 250 megabytes per month to be uploaded, which is sufficient for you know one or two episodes per week. Um, and then it also gives you access to stats. If you do not get uh, the $15 one, you get the $5 one, you don't get access to stats. Um, so you know, 15 bucks per month for doing what they're doing is, is a huge deal uh, and, and a great price. So that's the one I would recommend, but you can look at the details here if you wanna go further. Okay, so for right now, I'm gonna log into a test account that I use to set up a podcast for demonstration purposes. And uh, it's already set up, but I'm gonna show you the bits and pieces that you need to know and how to set those things up so that you can get your podcast up and running too. So I'll see you in there. Okay, so here we are in the back end of Libsyn, and this is for a podcast called Called Changed with a capital ED. This is related to education. I will be doing education related podcasts later down the road, but that, again, this was just a test episode. However, it is live on iTunes right now if you wanted to check it out. Um, what you need to do here is when you set it up, you're gonna register for a new show. And if you haven't done that yet, you click up here on the triangle icon and click register new show. After that, you then have to start to uh, set up your show properly. So first of all, be before we do anything with our MP3 file, those are the episodes, we need to set up our show first. So to do that, uh, let's click out of that and click on settings and let's go to edit show settings. And here's where you wanna include the things that you should already know, such as your show title, for example, your show description, which is here, the website address where you want this show to live. So this is where people on iTunes can click over to when they are uh, discovering your show. And then here you can click episodic in terms of show type or serial. Serial would mean uh, it's more like a storytelling type one, almost like a book with chapters. You don't start a book in chapter five, you start with chapter one. If you have a more episodic one where each episode could live individually on its own, then click episodic. Then you wanna include some tags and keywords. Just try to think about the items that your a potential listener would type in to potentially discover a show like yours. Then you wanna have your uh, public contact email and then you wanna make sure that Libsyn Classic Feed is selected. You can even include a lot of these other things here that I have blank, but you know they aren't necessary at this moment. This is mainly stuff that's gonna live on a page that Libsyn will give you that we don't really do anything with. But we do need a lot of these things for iTunes as well. So don't worry about all these other things. Just have this, what you see here, filled out especially the show title and the show description for sure, and the tags and keywords and those kinds of things. Now, when you go down here, you're also gonna upload your artwork too. You can see the artwork for uh, changed here, which is like a pencil on, um, you know, like notepad paper kind of thing. You can upload uh, it just simply by using the tabs here. And then after that, you just hit save and you are ready to go with your show. Now that your show is successfully saved, now we need to go into where we can get our feed and we need to adjust our feed settings too. So to do that, you're gonna to go to destinations and then go to edit or view existing. Now, when you scroll down, you're gonna see something called the Libsyn Classic Feed. You're going to edit this right now by clicking on edit. Now, here is where you select a lot of the items that are gonna be really important for how you are viewed and where you are viewed in iTunes. So iTunes categories, you wanna select a primary category, the number one category that you want to be uh, found in and ranked in. And yes, these can change over time, but pick the best one that suits you and you can pick two subcategories underneath that. 
Then you're gonna use an iTunes summary, uh, and this is uh, similar to the description that you put earlier. The owner name, this is you, this is the contact uh, host, um, and then the owner email. And then iTunes Store Basics, the author, this is gonna be also similar to the owner name and just make that the host name, obviously. Subtitles, subtitles aren't used very often, but um, when they are, it's just, uh, again, something that's nice to know. There may be a change in iTunes later down the road where they do use the subtitle, so you wanna make sure you include that just in case. Uh, we're clicking the same thing, episodic show type, language English, English. Uh, you can select the content rating here, clean or explicit, explicit. You can read some details related to uh, what defines that there. Uh, keywords, just copy and paste the same keywords from before. Here in this section, which is episode item or settings, you can actually create different podcast artwork for individual episodes, but that takes a lot of work and it's something that most people don't need to do. So if you just want when a person plays an episode to be the same artwork as what is it, what is in your uh, your podcast in general, your show, um, just click on this button, I have that on, and then you're good from there. Advanced options you don't really need to worry about, um, so just hit save and then you are good to go. Now, the most important part of this whole process, you will be introduced to your feed. This is a link, the really important link that when you click on, you're probably not gonna know what it means, but it's iTunes and any other directories. That's what they use to understand what episodes are available, what MP3 files to serve and so forth. And whenever you upload a new MP3 file to this host, that feed will update. Any changes you make will update this feed and therefore those directories will be updated too. You do not actually upload individual episodes to iTunes or to Stitcher or to Google Play. They all read this feed. So any changes you make, any up, uh, episodes that you upload, it's all done here in your podcast host. And that's the beauty of this. You just set it up once and iTunes and all those other directories, okay, they kind of work automatically from there. So let's go find your feed here. They've given it to me here since I just saved it, but it's also here as well. I'm gonna copy this because that's really important. As you can see here, it's changed.libsyn.com slash RSS. All right, couple things. Now that we have our uh, show information ready, now that we have our feed ready, we have that link. That's, that's tattoo that on your forehead. Don't literally do that, but you know what I mean? Like keep track of that link. That's really important. That's what you're gonna give to the directory. So save that right now. And you also know where to get it. It's in the destinations folder here in Libsyn. Now we need to talk about your episodes. We're going to upload an episode and I'll show you exactly how to do that. Now to do that, all you have to do is go to content and then go to add new episode. And here you can add that media file, the one that you saved. So I'm actually gonna do that with our test episode that we did earlier and I'll show you how this works. I'm gonna click on add media file, upload from hard drive. And then I'm gonna click on remember the one that says final on it because that's the final one that we want. We're gonna click open. It's gonna take a moment to upload. Okay, so now that that file is uploaded, as we can see here, we're gonna go uh, down to go to details. And this is where we put, again, the title of that particular podcast episode. That's a, a subtitle for a description. Again, this is just best practice to copy and paste and add all these things here anyway. Uh, and then um, scrolling down, you can change some of these things. So you can optimize your iTunes title. You can change the iTunes summary for this particular episode if you wanted to. Um, and then you can even add episode numbers and season numbers. If you wanted to remove the episode number from the title of the podcast itself, you can just include that here. Uh, and then just, again, any spot that is required, it's always best to do it, even though sometimes it pulls from one or another, just because different directories pull from different places, always best just to have it all in there. And so after that's done, you can go to artwork. Now again, remember the artwork is already embedded into that file, but you can add uh, new ones if you wanted to. And then go to scheduling, you can schedule when this episode comes out. And then finally, you can hit um, either publish or schedule. Now, if I were to hit publish right now, the feed on iTunes would then Within 24 hours, iTunes and other directories often take you know anywhere between 12 and 24 hours. Sometimes sooner. Sometimes it's really quick, uh, but you know give it 12 to 24 hours before it goes. Checks your RSS, RSS feed. It doesn't check instantly. It just checks every once in a while, and then it goes and says, "Oh, there's some new stuff in there. Let's add that to the mix." And uh, if I were to do that, it would take time, but it would eventually show up in there automatically. So it doesn't happen right away. You're gonna have to be patient, but that's how it works. All right, so we have our podcast host set up. We have our show ready to go. We have our first episode on there. And now we have also our RSS feed that we'll remember we tattooed on our face. What do we do with it? Well, now we have to let iTunes and the other directories know that this show exists. Now, really quick, I need to tell you because some of you might be like, wait, I'm gonna tell iTunes now. I'm not ready yet. I just have one episode. I wanna get more episodes up there, which is recommended actually. Um, what do I do here? Why, why would I go and put my thing on iTunes right now? Can I wait till later? You can, 
However, I would recommend making sure to get up on iTunes right now. Yes, even with one episode. Not everybody's gonna find it. It doesn't really matter. This is like the difference between, you know, building your house and your housewarming party. You're just making sure the house is stable and everything's connected. In case there's an error, you can fix it. And then your uh, housewarming party is like your launch party. When you make a big deal, you send everybody to the podcast, it's okay. So having that one episode in your hosting uh, account is fine. And then you upload it uh, just like we did. And then you connect it to iTunes like I'm about to show you. And that way you know everything is set up and then you can um, tweak and change things, add new things, and then get ready for that big launch day like you will. All right, so what do we do? Well, to connect to iTunes, like with the other directories like Stitcher and also Google Play, I'll add instructions for those two underneath this video for you because I don't want to waste your time. It's basically the same thing for each one, but iTunes obviously is the big one. You're gonna have to have an iTunes account in order to get access to this. If you don't have one, just set one up really quick. And then again, go to podcastsconnect.apple.com and then you're gonna be prompted with, you know, setting up a new show. And to do that, all you have to do is include your RSS feed. As you can see here, we are in iTunes Connect. I uh, connected my account. And all you have to do is paste that URL, the RSS feed, into this space. And now to test it, first we wanna hit validate. And this just makes sure that the podcast is set up properly. It pulls in the right artwork, it pulls in the right description, and it's actually gonna tell us what's wrong, if anything. And now already you can see there's something wrong, and the thing that's wrong is this feed has already been submitted. Other than that, everything else is okay. And this is what you're gonna see. If it's ready to submit, you will see that this submit button is highlighted. Everything else will be okay. It'll say ready for publication or something like that. You'll even see the episodes that you have in there in your feed already. Again, this pulls this in from Libsyn. If I were to add another episode in here and hit publish on that other one, it would automatically show here because it is actively calling for what is in that feed. So actually, I wonder if I could do that uh, right now just for fun. But let's go in here and click publish. Oh, well, I can't do that because I haven't filled out all the details, but that's okay, but you get the idea. If I were to do that and spend time filling out all the details for that test episode uh, here in Podcast Connect, uh, you would see it here as, uh, as another episode here. Now, if you're ready, you just hit submit and then you wait. Now you can wait anywhere between four hours, eight hours to sometimes a few days. It depends on the human beings over there at Apple who literally check this out um, and make sure it's okay and legit. So uh, that's how it is and that's how you submit your show. And once it's ready, you will get an email. You'll get an email and it'll say, hey, your podcast is ready and it will be up on the stores very soon. And then you can go find it using your keywords or just you know typing it in. Um, or you might get an email that says, sorry, something is wrong. And thankfully they've been a lot better lately at telling you what is wrong so you can go in there and fix it. And sometimes it's a swear word in your description. Other times it's something to do with the size or the quality of your artwork. They'll tell you what's up and they'll be able to help you fix it. So that's how you submit to Apple and iTunes. And it's basically the same thing for Stitcher and Google Play. And like I said, we'll have the links for those right below this video for you too. Now, one question I always get is, do I need a website to actually host my podcast? Well, for hosting your podcast, no. I just showed you how to host your podcast. You can even submit it without a website. But I would highly recommend having a website for your podcast because that's a place where you want people to come back, where people can discover new things, where you can have call to actions like subscribe to your email list and all sorts of things. You can potentially even sell products on your website too for your podcast listeners. And you can have show notes. Show notes are detailed notes about each individual episode. Each episode would have its own essentially blog post where you can include a player. And I'll show you really quick in just a moment how in Libsyn you can grab a player for each individual episode and just plop it right into uh, to that particular blog post. Super simple, I actually have a blog, uh, obviously Smart Passive Income, where I use uh, a custom player that I built called the Smart Podcast Player at smartpodcastplayer.com if you wanna check that out once you get up and running. You can totally do that, but this is a player that uh, we created and this is what hosts the podcast on the website. And you'll be surprised. There's actually a lot of people who actually listen to your podcast, not on iTunes or Stitcher or Google Play, but actually on your website, especially those who are finding you for the first time. So you wanna make sure they're able to listen to a podcast and obviously within your podcast, you want them to be inclined to subscribe so they can get it automatically downloaded onto their device later. So. I'll show you really quick how to get a player from Libsyn and where the code is that you can plop into your website. Okay, and over time, you're gonna see your stats increase again. Remember, this is a test episode, so that's why I'm only getting a couple downloads a day, if that. But once your podcast is up and running, it's really cool. You're gonna see these stats grow over time. You'll see that when you publish a new episode, you're gonna get a giant spike from all your subscribers. It's gonna go back down again, but not down as far as it was. And then you're gonna get an even bigger spike, and that's kind of the sequence of events that happens as you begin to get consistent with your show. It's really fun. Now to go to your older episodes here, you just go to content and you go to previously published. 
Here are the three previously published episodes for this test podcast. And I'm just gonna go and click uh, right here where it says uh, link and embed. So I'm gonna click on that. And this will give you a number of different player styles if you scroll down below. So I can get, for example, um, you know, uh, the standard one, or I can get the legacy one, I can get this custom one. Um, uh, typically the standard one works out pretty well, but you can do the custom one with its own image too if you wanted to. Either one, it's all good. What you do is you set these parameters uh, for the embed code, uh, and then you hit preview get embed code, and that'll give you the link and you can get a preview for it up there. As you can see, it just automatically pulled in my artwork. And this is what you include in your uh, WordPress or your Squarespace blog post so that you can actually play your episodes within your content too. And then in terms of the written content that goes along with your podcast episodes, you can be as detailed and, uh, and, and summarize as much as you want. Um, remember, a lot of people are coming to your website to see this and the more detailed it is, perhaps the better impression it will make. You can even make it very useful saying, you know, I talk about this at this timestamp. I talk about this uh, topic during this part of the podcast. You can even have information and links related to your podcast, which is really the big, big benefit there for us. Uh, any links and resources that you mentioned on the show, you can say, hey, by the way, all these links and resources are mentioned on the show notes over my blog. You can go there by going here. And uh, that way, even sometimes those are affiliate links or product links so that you can even begin to start making sales and monetize your podcast too. So that's how you can get your podcast connected to your website and how show notes work. Okay, so sequence of events one more time. You get set up with your hosting company. You can try Libsyn or Buzzsprout. Then you can get your show settings all correct. Collect your RSS feed. That's again, what you submit to iTunes and Stitcher and Google Play. You also wanna make sure you upload your first episode, put in all the details there. And that way there is an episode that lives on your feed. Actually, if you were to submit your feed without an episode already in it, you will be denied. So you will have to have at least one episode to get approved. And then you kind of wait a little bit until you get that email from Apple and the other directory is to say, yes, your podcast is live. And then you can go out there and share it with the world in whatever way that you want. Wow, we covered so much across the last three videos here. I'm so proud of you for getting this far and getting your show just ready for launch. Now, obviously there's a lot more to this podcasting thing than getting your podcast up and running and you're essentially there, but there's so much more to this. For example, the launch of your podcast. How do you make sure that there are listeners there on the other end the day you launch? What about over time? How do you keep growing it? How do you get more exposure for the podcast? How do you connect with other guests who are gonna share this? There's so much more to this. What about monetization and sponsorships and advertising, selling your own products? What about tactics for helping listeners stay and listen on further through that episode that you create? There's so much more to this, which is why I created my course, Power Up Podcasting. And for those of you who wanna go all in with me on this, you kinda get a gist of the style of my teaching. If this is something you like and you wanna get everything you need to know, in a way that allows you to do it and execute and get results from it like the hundreds of other students who have taken this course, I highly recommend at this point you upgrade to my course, Power Up Podcasting. In addition to that content, you're also gonna get access to me in office hours and access to a community with all of those other students, alumni and current students who are all there to help motivate and support each other. So if that's something that sounds interesting to you, all you have to do is go to poweruppodcasting.com and you can check it out right there. Uh, if not, that's okay. Perhaps you're just ready to go and that's totally fine too. I'm just super thankful that you are taking action here and that you are committing to podcasting and Power Up Podcasting will always be available to you if you change your mind in the future. So for those of you watching this on YouTube right now, best of luck to you. I, uh, I'm so thankful and I'm excited to see your show up on iTunes and the other directories very soon. Good luck.